Joining me now is the personal counsel to President Joe Biden, Bob Bauer. Bob, it's great to see you. Thank you for taking the time. I mean, obviously, one Thank of the main... It's great to be here. It's great to be with you. One of the main issues that legal experts had with Robert Hur's report was about the way in which he portrayed his interviews with the president. And I have certainly been talking about this quite a bit over the last couple of days as well, the things in the report. Now, you were in the room sitting next to him. There's an ongoing question. I know you said you're not going to answer about when the transcript of that five-hour interview could be released, if it should be released. But I wanted to know more, if people were to read that transcript, you were sitting there. What do you think their takeaway of it would be about the president's performance and about his conversation? Well, first of all, let me tie it back to the point you made at the very beginning. The president directed and those who represented him engaged in full cooperation with the special counsel. And the special counsel's report on that is very clear. The interview, and I will give you my recollection of it, I was there sitting next to the president. Uh, the interview was completely consistent with that posture of cooperation. Uh, he engaged with the questions. He answered the questions to the best of his ability. I have mentioned before that uh, the special counsel at the very beginning indicated to him that he knew that international events must be on the president's mind, uh, that he was going to be taking the president many years back and simply mm -hmm. hope for him to give his best recollection. And that's what the president did. I can tell you that his insinuations or the suggestions in the report uh, about the president's interview just simply don't correspond with my recollection of how that interview went. And I frankly don't understand why they're in the report, don't believe they should be in the report. This was a case that was frankly open and shut from the very first day. There was never any question uh, of the president having engaged in any wrongdoing. And it was a case of full cooperation that began with his discovering and turning over the documents that were found. And from that point forward, and note the special counsel says he cooperated in, quote, other ways, beyond the interview, beyond the turning over the documents, at every turn, the president cooperated with this investigation, and he did so in answering the questions that were put to him in the interview. You also said yesterday, which stuck out to me, I underlined it, that he, the special counsel was asking bad questions. I mean, the thing is with these reports, you only see one side Tell me a little bit more about that. Why were they bad or imprecise, I guess? I wasn't suggesting that every single question was bad. I was simply pointing out that the special counsel had indicated uh, that somehow the president wasn't able to answer questions directly or clearly. And I was simply suggesting, uh, again, based on what I clearly recall, and I think all of us in the room recall, that the president was not only answering questions, he was pointing out flaws in lines of questioning that were put to him by the special counsel. On a couple of occasions, he noted that there was a problem with the question. I think it became immediately clear to everyone in the room there was a problem with the question. I didn't deduce from that that there was something wrong with uh, the special counsel's mental acuity. I just assumed that in those instances, he had framed his questions poorly. But what I was trying to emphasize there was that the president was engaged with this interview. He was able to provide his best recollection. And on a couple of occasions, he pointed out that there were problems with the questions put to him that I think everybody in the room recognized he correctly identified. As someone who has been on the receiving ends of the president unraveling your line of questioning, uh, I, I have been, I know you have been, I, I felt I related a little in that moment. I, I did want to ask you a little bit about that day, because I think this is sometimes lost in the reporting. I mean, it was the day after the two, the day, the two days after the October 7th attack. And obviously, the country saw how much that impacted the president. I know from working for him that he often is juggling many things at the same time, making calls with foreign leaders, getting updates. Was that part of the day as well? Did he have to take breaks? Did he come from a two-hour situation room meeting? I mean, what else was happening that day? I can say this. Uh, we kept the appointment. Uh, we, a decision was made. Uh, and, of course, this is ultimately the president's decision uh, for any number of reasons uh, that he would keep the agreed date for the interview, which was going to span two days and run five hours. It went somewhat over five hours. But when he arrived in the room uh, to meet counsel before proceeding downstairs to the interview, he was coming off of uh, phone calls of obviously urgent importance on these international events. That I knew. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was clear that in the preceding hours, he'd been very engaged with these issues. But 
He had committed to give the interview. We knew that we were coming to the end of the inquiry. And he understood that it was important to the special counsel's investigation that we try to stay on schedule. Scheduling two days, five hours mm. of interviews of the president's time is not easy to do. And rescheduling them is not easy to do. And so he kept that appointment and he gave that interview. It's often what people don't see, is especially given the time change. My bet is there were hours and hours of, of meetings beforehand. You know, one of the points that you've made and, and other legal minds have said about this report is that it kind of goes, of course, outside of the scope of norms. It, it goes, it, his reporting and who he talked to went outside of what would be normal, even for a special counsel. Do you think that should be investigated or looked into? Because the judicial system, the judiciary is kind of in a, 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 not, a not a positive view necessarily by the American public at this point. Well, in the role that I have, all I can do is point it out, which is you had an investigation that ran for 15 months, which could have been concluded in just a few months. There was never any question that the president had not engaged in criminal wrongdoing. He was the self-reporting party here. He had turned the documents over upon discovery, cooperated in every respect. And yet somehow in this report, uh, the special counsel felt compelled to engage in this irrelevant, unfounded, and often pejorative commentary. And I think it's clear that uh, that commentary is inconsistent with department norms. And let me just make one point. I want to stress it. The special counsel is bound by the norms and policies of the department like any other prosecutor. The special counsel regulations provide that he is bound by those norms and policies. He doesn't have an exemption from them. There's some view that perhaps because he's a special counsel, he didn't have to observe them. And that is simply not correct. By the terms of the rules, he is to comply with those norms and policies, and he didn't. Do you wish the attorney general had done more? Could he have? I'm not going to I'm not going to speak to anybody other than the special counsel and his performance in that particular report. Uh, the president said the other night that he understood why the attorney general and thought, you know, he could not only under, understand, but did not find fault with the attorney general's decision to appoint a special counsel. It was at that point that I got involved. And so I can speak to what the special counsel did for which the special counsel bears the responsibility. Bob Bauer, thank you. I know you taught a long class before you joined us, so I appreciate you making the time for us tonight. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jen.